Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on this third Sunday of Easter for all of the prisoners of Sacred Heart and St. Athanasius parishes, both living and deceased. Brethren, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, and most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds and wonders and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will find me with joy in your presence. My brothers, note, my brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon it, his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to glory to you, o Lord. Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened, up, it opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the, the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Human Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. The first half of the 17th century saw an outbreak of the infamous bubonic plague, 
uh, more commonly known as the Black Death, all across Europe. The city of London, which at that time had a population of 350,000, making it the third largest city in Europe, suffered a mortality rate of 20%. An amazing 70,000 people out of 350,000 in, in London alone died to the Black Plague. And overall, millions of people died across Europe, which was far more significant at that time because at that time, Europe didn't have the population that it does today. They lost millions of people in a far smaller population pool than we have today. And, and this plague raged across all of Europe. In the year 1632, the bubonic plague broke out in Bavaria, in southern Germany. The, pe the people in the little village of Oberammergau, which was located in the Alpine mountains there in Bavaria, did everything they could to quarantine their town, their little village, and keep the plague out. They closed the town's gates. They posted sentries to walk the borders of the little village and guard its borders. They even set fires to scare outsiders from coming in. And they practiced social distancing, you know, 17th century style. And for a while, it worked. But one night near Christmas that year, one of the villagers who had been working in a neighboring village was so desperate to, re to return home over Amargau and visit his family that he slapped, slipped past the guards. His name was Kaspar Schisler, and Kaspar brought the plague with him to his home village. Within a year, 84 people had died in that small little community of Oberammergau, affecting just about every family. One out of every four people in that little village died within a year. So the remaining people decided to make a vow to God. They gathered in their parish church, which exists to this very day, St. Peter and St. Paul Parish, and they pledged to God that if he spared them of the plague in gratitude they would perform a passion play a an on-stage reenactment of the life passion death and resurrection of christ and they would do so every 10 years forever after the plague was still raging in bavaria in 1633 but the funeral funeral records kept by St. Peter Paul Parish indicate that from that day forward, after the, the people made their promise to God, no other townsfolk died from the Black Death. You can even go to Oberammergau today and visit the parish and see a, a, a battered, leather-bound book, uh, the funeral registrar of the parish, and you will see that nobody had died after the, that day of the death, Black Death. Whether God acted directly or through nature, we don't know. And honestly, it doesn't really even matter. Because in any case, the contagion instantly stopped. Those who were already healthy remained healthy. And those who were ill of the plague were cured. Again, no other deaths after the villagers made that promise to God. All of the surrounding villages have been devastated. In the nearby village of Bad Kolbrug, only one married couple was said to have survived, but Omar Amagal was spared. And we're now in the midst, of course, in the, of another terrible pandemic. It's a crisis, just like the people back then had their own crisis. And so far, our crisis has claimed tens of thousands of lives, not millions, and we all hope, of course, that it'll never reach the millions, our sophisticated 21st century science and methodologies are, of course, far more sophisticated than they were in the 17th century. We can and should resort to all kinds of human solutions to save lives wherever it makes sense. 
We have locked down our cities. We have enacted stay-at-home orders. Our borders have been closed. Many businesses are largely shut down. People are going around wearing face masks. We're washing our hands more frequently. We're practicing physical distancing and so forth. There's also a race going on right now in labs around the world to develop treatments. All of these measures are well and good, but we must never ever fool ourselves by relying exclusively on human solutions. If the people of prior times had recourse to God through prayer and penance, then why shouldn't we do likewise today? Certainly our science is vastly superior today, brothers and sisters, but is our faith as strong as theirs was? Are we as fervent in our faith as the people of Oberammergau? Are we willing to pray and to do penance as they did? You know, an advancement in a given technology may result in a hundredfold improvement in the process, whatever it may be. But what is that compared to the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in the person who developed that process improvement? Yes, by all means, let us use the modern tools and techniques made possible by our God-given intellect. But at the same time, we should never be dismissive of the power of prayer and of pledging ourselves to God and doing penance as did the faithful people of that humble little village. Even if we had a vaccine today, human solutions are simply not enough, and they never can be, because ultimately we must look upwards. Heaven provides the hope and the ultimate answers for all of our crises, not just for COVID-19, which will someday pass, but for every crisis yet to come. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Amen. maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The great light of faith has drawn us to this altar. United in faith and practice, let us ask our Father to grant our intentions. For the church in the world today, that her leaders will preach the gospel with wisdom and zeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I hear our prayer. For the non-religious nations, that people who live in darkness will see the light of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I hear our prayer. For a unity among Christians, that man-made divisions may be healed through truth and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, the people of St. Athanasius and Sacred Heart Parishes, that the one Eucharist will strengthen our unity and solidarity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that Christ will be their true light and salvation. We pray especially for Dan Wood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you know our needs before we express them. Show your kindness again to your people. Gather in the unity of prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Thus we are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the winding off you fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, God. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of his name. For the good and good of all his church. Amen. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for her such greatness, grant also the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Psalm 2 Psalm 2 
and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with her servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or we offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through your merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father of faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, 
He wholly sacrificed a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us for the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, for we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you stay. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to remove by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whom his redeeming work, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you and will remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of soul. Amen. By his resurrection.